Hey guys, this is Nell once again from the Overclocker Magazine and here we are, the first video of 2022. I hope you all had a good rest and whatnot and you're ready to go with 2022 and all the tech that it brings. Hopefully this year tech is cheaper, more available and just generally we have more fun, just more games to use this new tech that we have and all that good stuff. So the first review for this year is actually a DRAM kit that I've had for quite a while and that's the Clev Kres X DDR4 4000 kit. Now this is only 16 gigabytes of memory and the last time I saw this memory available was at Eve Tech, and they had it for about 2,500 or about 2,600 rand, somewhere around there. However, the US dollar price for this should be around $150, but I'm just not able to find it anywhere. What I am able to find, however, is a DDR4 3600 kit, which is the same kit as this one. The only difference is that it's a lower skew. So at 3,600 versus 4,000, which is the one that I tested. Now, the reason that this matters is because prior to this 4,000 kit, I actually looked at the 3,600 and found that much like most Hynix or decent Hynix kits, it can do over DDR4 5,000 and true uh, was the case for this 4,000 SKU as well. So the reason I wanted to look at specifically the 4,000 is because I suspected that because of uh, just the binning of ICs, this might be able to do not only 5066, but maybe 5333, you know, motherboard allowing. So in all of that time, since I had this memory, it's gone through, I think, a Z590 platform and Z690 as well. Maybe AMD as well, I'm not sure, but I definitely know of those two. And the motherboard of choice for the Z590 platform was the ASRock Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX. You can check out the motherboard review in the link i think yeah below and the other motherboard that i used to test out this memory was the aurus z590 tachyon so both two dim boards both showed that this memory was very capable and on both motherboards i did over 5066 however the interesting thing about this memory is that it now presents you with options that you generally didn't have prior to us getting 12th gen perhaps even 11th gen because if you look at it I mean, with 10th gen CPUs and you buy something like this, you're just going to go for max clocks, tightest timings, and that's it. You don't have to worry about gearing and so forth. But with 11th gen and of course with 12th gen, there's gear one and gear two that you have to deal with. So with 11th gen systems, if you're using this clef memory, gear one is going to take you to say, or at least in my case, say DDR4 3733. That's the best that I could do in gear one. And as nice as that is, if you realize that you're dealing with Hynix ICs, meaning the best you can do is likely like 16, 20, 20, 32, or 28. And that's not really good. I mean, if we're talking b die, then you'd be doing 14, 14, 14, and whatnot. But you're not able to do that. So gear one on an 11th gen system with this memory won't necessarily serve you. You might want to go for gear two. There are situations where gear one actually performs better despite the low frequency and relatively loose timings, at least compared to B-Die. But for the most part, I would rather run gear two mode 5066 and just tighten the sub timings. When it comes to 12th gen, something more interesting happens because it means you are now repre presented rather with a system that can do gear one, maybe up to 4133, at least the CPU that I have. And I know some CPUs get, that can do 4266 or even 4300 in gear one. And if you're able to do that, put together the timings, maybe CL18 and so forth, you're generally going to get the best performance regardless of what other higher frequency you could do with gear two mode. And that's on the 12th gen. The settings that I'm going to show you, I tried XMP 4000 and then I did gear one 3733. This is 11th gen. And then I also did uh, DDR4 5066 just so you could see how that performance stacks up. Depending on the benchmark, again, you might want to go for gear one or you want to want to go for gear two mode. However, what I will tell you about the 5066 settings is that I didn't tune the sub timings. That's why the performance is so low. OK, I just wanted to show you something that is possible to do without fiddling with the sub timings. Everybody can do sub timing tuning and there's plenty of performance to be had there and you can lower the IDA64 memory test latency and so forth and that does translate into actual game performance provided you're not GPU bound. So 2500 for 16 gigabytes of memory that may seem a, may seem like a lot of money but if you compare it with DDR5 yes with DDR5 you're likely going to get a 32 gigabyte kit but it's not going to cost you 
twice the price of this memory It'll cost you three times that right you pay seven grand or so forth with a very basic ddr5 so it may not be worth it for most people so even if you are looking at 12th gen i think there's still some legs in ddr4 and depending on the platform you choose to use it on and the tuning of course you can get some really mighty performance from where i stand i think that ddr4 can still give you a lot of mileage depending on how well you can actually tune the memory so what do i think of what this memory actually looks like i mean i've done this memory before like you know on the 3600 kit it looks exactly the same i love the way it looks it's not as bright as i've seen other leds on some dram kits but when it's in the system and installed i don't think it makes much of a difference you know i really think that this is probably looks the part it looks better than i would have thought it did at least on paper on the website but with that said i mean this is memory that i highly 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 recommend particularly the 3600 because it's even cheaper than this i think it can be had perhaps at less than two grand or just over two grand and if it will rather i know it will do over 5g memory and if it can do that for you on your system that's a steal right that's a really 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 good price yeah and that's it for the first review of the year the clev ddr4 4000 rgb kit and i'm hoping to bring you some more on the clev memory and some other memory as well on various motherboards and so forth but yeah let me know what you guys think are you still looking to ddr4 would you mind buying a 16 gigabyte kit uh, are you using elder lake are you what's happening with you guys so anyway remember to share like subscribe if you want it's all optional and yeah, I'll see you guys on the flip side. So take care and peace.